Brian Markowitz and Keith Haney. The guy who takes a lot of good-natured ribbing from Donald Long comes up in his 2016 Camaro with 948 cubic inches of monstrous nitrous engine in the front of it, rear and Morrison power plant. I forget his name. Oh, that's right. Brian just announced it. But Brian Markowitz will be coming on the left hand side to Largo, Florida, 69 Camaro. But here we go. Enigma. And the right hand side, here comes Markowitz. The Markowitz making his, uh, you know, he put the car together, got this thing ready to rock and roll, and he wanted to be a competitor right here in the Radio Versus the World category. $50,000 to win right here. Pro line power plant on the left hand side, but a lot of people know Keith Haney. He's too short to see over the wheel. He's actually got the booster seat on board. So we're going to see if he can lay down a number here. Brandon Square, Brandon Schweitzer, Schweitzer Dynamics out there. And Brandon Pass is doing the tuna. So Haney purging the nitrous. The Larry Jeffers built chassis in this car, built really to compete at this event, some other of the Highline radial events across the country. Moments of brilliance out of this car, but it's not really come together the way Haney wants it to at any one particular race. He's not found it in the winner's circle yet, as I'm trying to say, but the car certainly has all the parts and pieces to get there. Markowitz, a long history in the sport. Not really long history in this car, though, so we'll find out what he's able to put down the racetrack his first shot through. Stage comes on board here. Five plus, uh, about five stages of nitrous on the right-hand side. Is he going to go in first? Nope, turbo car puts it in. Here comes the nitrous car. Three to the man. with an 896 62 so keith haney crushing it down low sub one second 60 foot time he's 260 to the split and 85 with an eight out the door he leads the class by a tenth and a half now as brian markowitz coasts his way to a 701 at just 70 miles an hour in the camaro wow bam wham thank you man keith haney said you know what bring it on man i'm tired of all the crap talking 385 196 right here on this uh, conditions pretty good and he about tore the green tin off the bulb on the way by at 026 reaction time for keith haney so take that duck he says Oh, here he comes, the man who was the number one qualifier up until about three minutes ago, Keith Haney, will line up against Mark Mickey. This is great. This right here is a heavyweight. It's, they're not racing each other at this point. They're running the clock, but these are two, obviously, the best cars in the country. Talking about price of a mission. He'll be coming out of Waterbox right here. Hold your ears as nobody knows his name. That's right. He's too short to drive. The Enigma comes on the and here we go. That's right. The car that actually took a little uh, chassis there. He got the weight out of it. This car, he says, is capable of going 60s. But can we see it here at Lights Out 9? That is going to be the question. Believe it or not, that stock wheelbase 78 Chevy Malibu is the fastest car mile an hour wise in the history of this category, having gone 215 miles an hour down in Florida a couple of weeks ago. Duck claims that Mark Mickey is going to take that boxy little Chevrolet and stick it into the number one qualifying spot. One of the coolest things about Mickey's car is the engine, of course, the standard bore spacing, yes. big block Chevy. It's got billet, it's not like it's got a set of cast cylinders. It's got no. billet heads, it's got all the great stuff on it, but it's not a big bore spacing block, and they make a ton of power. Yeah, Nelson did a great job of the engine department right there. He's got fuel tech on board right here inside. Red Hat Mafia looking it out, man. This car has potential to set the record right here, right now. Can he do it? That's going to be the question. Or how about Keith Haney? You can buy his merchandise on Manufacturers Midway. The man that is the smallest man in the category trying to go back to number one. So race fans, this is it, man. Worth the price of a mission. Coming to the start line right now. Two of the baddest in the world right here in Lights Out Dine. Mark Mickey, Eminem Transmissions. Jason Carter says, go get him, boy. Keith Haney, left-hand side of racetrack, the Oklahoma man. Potential the man here, if they both get a hold of it, potential for the quickest side-by-side -side run in the history of drag radial racing. So here we go. Stage in right here. Mickey goes 385 at 205, 102, 60 foot coming out there. Mark Mickey goes number two and actually bumps down Keith Haney to number three. 
That's right, yeah, Mickey sn sneaks around him. It looked like they really walked that thing off the starting line pretty gingerly and then put the power to it. 205 mile an hour top end speed. He's only the second car to go over 200 so far in qualifying. 211's a top speed. All right, here it comes. Stevie Fast going up against Keith Hayden and number one and two qualifiers going at each other. Stevie Fast in the right lane. Keith Haney will be over there in the left lane out of Broke, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. I'm going to be like your partner here. Yes. Grudge race. Grudge, grudge race. Grudge race. Grudge race. That's right. That's right. He'd come anytime Stevie Jackson buckle up as a grudge race. And I'm going to bet you another 50 bucks. If Stevie's out front, he's going to yoke the gas on him. Wop, wop. Wop, wop. Wop him, Stevie. Yeah, they call that horse of the gas. Can Stevie fast. Take out Keith Haney. That's right. That's right. We're moments away from firing these two out. All right, here at we need to get some of the people out the oh. starting line, though. We got too many people on the starting line. Watch <laughs> out, because when Stevie come through there and break that thing, boop, boop. Yeah, I think I got to go. Oh, here we go. All right. Take it over, Brian. You and... You and Lee Sleepwing. You forgot yeah. my name. <laughs> yeah, JR. All right, so hold your ears. The one, the only, the world famous Stevie Fast Jackson. Gonna kill the life side by side. Lighten them up, baby. Let's do this. Final qualifying session. Quite literally, the whole entire drag strip. Is Entire drag strip is on their feet. Every person in this place is on their feet to watch wow. this. Look at everybody standing up out there to trying to figure out who's going to win the big run race. Look at the people on the starting line. Oh, yes. This is worth the price of a mission right here. This one race is worth the price of a mission. So Jackson backing up the Shadow 2.0 with its strange engineering sponsorship on the doors and the Enigma coming back with Keith Haney tucked up close to the steering wheel. Here As he, he always is. Man, these are two of the biggest trash talkers alive. Going at it. Keith Haney, left hand side. Stevie Fast on the right hand side. Nobody knows his name. He's got the uh, the big seat inside because he said he's taking out Stevie about. Fast right here. Remember, Haney wanted the back tire when they started going back and forth about All right, here we go. My stuff's never been as quick as yours. Give me the advantage. And Stevie said, I'm not going to give you an advantage. And Haney finally relented. Last night, this whole thing came about. The two of them were betting each other on quarter flips. And one of them lost his, uh, lost his backside of the the other so they're trying to race for the money back they got side bets going on the reaction time advantage side bets going on who makes it to each and every cone or block down the drag strip first Stevie fans with the gap Stevie fans with the gap there you go a little nitrous purge hit on the left hand side you got multiple stages five stages to be exact the rear horse of power left hand side of racetrack and the Brian Anderson heavy, Stevie Pants puts a free stage on. Is there going to be any games as they put them in the beams right here? And lights out, nine, Stevie's in. Here comes Haney and lights out. at 198.06 miles an hour in 040 reaction time for Jackson a 23 light for Haney who goes 3901 at 196 let those two guys hear it as they go around the turn at the top end of the racetrack that was awesome six hundred cubic inches of turbo engine for Jeff Shaver Chevrolet style engine and Keith Haney relying on 948 cubic inches of nitrous willing rear Morrison power in the front of that Larry Jeffers race cars built Camaro. All right, it is time. PTC Radio versus the World. Brought to you by Diamond Pistons. Let's do this. First round action $50,000 up for grabs. And nobody knows the guy's name on the right-hand side. That's right. Oh, that's Keith Haney. That's right. From Brooklyn Arrow, Oklahoma. And the reality here is all the pressure's on Keith Haney. Jeff Schauber is happy to make the show. Schauber's main uh, kind of competition, his main class that he's going to be running here is not necessarily Radio vs. the World. But the fact that he's in here is just some gravy. Some gravy being able to run in front of a packed drag strip on a Saturday night here in Valdosta, Georgia. Keith Haney, by all accounts, needs to win this round, is expected to win this round, and really can only do stuff to not win this round. Get out there and not screw it up's the name of the game. 
Lee, I'd argue that it's tougher to me, in my mind anyway, it always seems to play on the sport this way. It's tougher to take a car like Keith Haney's and tame it down to make sure you know it's going to go down the racetrack than it is for a guy like Jeff Sharvin to maybe lean on a little harder and go a little faster. I mean, without a doubt. But, I mean, Haney's got Brandon Schweitzer right there. He's got Brandon Pez. They caught a Brandon Square Tuning. Rear Morrison horsepower. He's made it down every single pass down this drag strip. So, you know, he's just going to have the same exact tune-up in it, I think, just for the victory. Haney's going to have some confidence coming to the starting line. Again, a reference back to that great 023 light he pulled out against Stevie Fast. So we know he can leave. We know he's comfortable at the Christmas tree. He's just going to have to be very comfortable and very able to do what he can if this car breaks traction off the line and Jeff Chavers hooks up. If he can pedal it quick, he still may have a fighting chance. Oh, and Chavers double bowled him. All right. Wow. The Getting out to a flying start. Playing games are playing. Here we go. Keith Haney sick. almost put it across the center line. He stood it up on the back bumper and rolls it across. I don't believe he I don't believe he crossed the center line. Holy smoke. Unbelievable right there. Who says the track's not hooking now, baby? That's right. Keith Haney was going for a flight. All right, time to do this as Keith Haney's coming alive on the right hand side, and here comes Paul Major. Paul Major heating the tires, and here comes Keith Haney. Both cars back in their way to the starting line. Turbo chargers or nitrous oxide. Paul Major, Fort Blanca, New York, the 2001 Corvette. The 526 cubic inch turbocharged Hemi and Keith Haney, 948 cubic inches of rear and Morrison mountain motor with a load of nitrous oxide cursing through its veins. You can see the purge happening there Ooh. for Haney in the starting line. So you got about five stages of nitrous coming on the right hand side. Brandon Square doing a tuner right there. Top secret. Shh, nobody knows about it. Brandon Pass behind it. Brandon Schweitzer. Schweitzer Dynamics helps tune this car. Paul Major to left hand side has got the JE automotive power machine. He's really gonna have to turn it up though. Keith Haney went for a flight last night almost. Let's see if he's got the front end tied down. Yeah, so, thankfully the car not damaged with that uh, violent landing it had. The guys had did have overnight to fix it if there was anything that needed replacing. It's a well stocked, well funded team. We'll find out if Haney's got the nitrous tune up to knock off. Paul Major in the turbocharged Corvette. Cody Moore puts him in the beams. Here we go. Who's it gonna be? Paul Major moves in, left-hand side. Here comes Keith Heaney to right. Six at 196 for the victory. Major goes into three seconds over for the first time in the weekend, but not enough as he goes 396 at 204. Yeah, Paul's best week uh, run by a bunch down that 396. You saw the 204 mile an hour speed, and you saw Major starting to pull on Haney. Unfortunately for Paul Major, it's only a 660 foot drag race, and Keith Haney, by about two car lengths, takes the wind light at the finish line. Getting serious now. Keith Haney going to roll into the box now. He, here's a here's oh, a question. Hold on, hold on. I like your thinking here. Keith Haney and Ken Joe Kelly. Haney has roared off a string of runs in the mid 380s here. Ken Joe Kelly is on a first time basis here on radials. Made his first three second pass just the last round down in the low 90s. We'll find out if uh, if those guys can stand on Ken Joe's car and get it back down in the 80s. In theory, to be competitive, where Haney has lived the entire weekend. Yeah, it'd be absolutely crazy, man. You know his name. Everybody knows his name, Keith Haney. Can you imagine if Keith Haney could take home fifty thousand dollars out of Duck's pocket? It would never end. We'd never hear the end of it. It would be so many uh, different shows out there, Facebook live feeds, you name it. All right, so here we go. Ken Joe Kelly, left-hand side, is going to be coming to life. But listen to this. 900-plus cubic inches of rear Morrison power. Ah. Ken Joe Kelly rolls through the water box, comes to a complete stop, and now begins to heat the tires. 
Happy birthday, Michael Cass. This Ken Joe Kelly making his debut right here at Radio Wars of the World. A man, I think he's been, he's letting everybody know that he's there. He, he's in the quarterfinals. Can he make yeah. it to semis? This is a, this is a, I, I don't know what Ken Joe's Kelly, Ken Joe Kelly's expectations were coming into this weekend. No matter what happens in this pair, there's no way that guy leaves disappointed. Everybody knows who he is now. Everybody knows he has a car that can run. And everybody knows that he has made it right now, at least down to the round of eight here at the most prestigious radial drag race in the world. So the question is, will the real Keith Haney stand up right here in the car? That's going to be the question. As Kenjo Kelly says, I'm going to take you out. Red Hat Mafia helping him out. Look at Josh Ledford. Leffert over there with his half backwards saying, bring it on, Sasquatch, baby. Think of the brain power in the starting line right now. You get all those pro line guys stacked up over there. Then you got Brandon Pez and Brandon Schweitzer on the side of the racetrack behind Keith Haney. There are multiple layers to rooting for these teams, or what's interesting about these teams, and the tuning aspect of it is fascinating. So many very smart guys have their hands in these race cars. Square doing the tune over there. Brandon Pez, Brandon Schweitzer to right hand side of the racetrack. When you put those two together, it can be unstoppable when it comes to nitrous racing. Can Joe Kelly on the left hand side? Can the turbo car make the boost to put Haney on the trailer? The first 60 feet, maybe the first 20 feet of this drag race will absolutely tell the entire tale. They're both pre-staged. Kenjo's in. Here comes Keith Haney. Graham, look at the Kills on the right hand side. Can he hold up and charge? It's going to be Keith. Wow. 80, 381 at 198, 986, 60 foot, 048 on the tree. The real Keith Haney stood up. All right, so if you're still on the property, start heading to the stands. That's right, it's going to be semifinals of PTC Radio versus the World. Brought to you by Diamond Pistons right here. Coming at you. Who nobody knows his name, Keith Haney. That's right, going to come out the right-hand side. 948 cubic inches of rear marks of power, but hold your ears. Here comes Low Black Betty. So Haney in the right hand side, 948 cubic inches of rear marks of power. He's got Schweitzer Dynamics, Brandon Squared, Brandon Schweitzer, of course, Brandon Paz doing the tuning. The right hand side of the racetrack, Larry Jeffers Race Guys. Paulo Juice coming out of Canada. G-Force race guys. Jim Salemi doing the tune-in. John Salemi, I'm sure, is watching on in California, and Melanie's watching on from Canada. Something that we talked about earlier in the week was the fact that Paulo Juice has been in the high 370s with this car just in the last couple of weeks. If Jim Salemi can dial up a tune-up in that zone, if we look at the history of this weekend, they'll probably go to the final round. Keith Haney's car has been a very consistent 383 to 385 car, and I'm sure Jim Salemi knows all about that. Most definitely, we're going to find out. Haney in the right-hand side. Juice coming to the left-hand side. This could go either direction. Who's going to go to the final rounds here in Lights Out? Nine, no escape. I'm going to call a shot. 379, right lane. Okay, he's saying so. Donald Long saying to Keith Haney's going 79, right lane. Calling the shot. Follow Juice is pre-staged. Keith Haney's free stage. Follows in. Here we go. Keith Haney, maybe 379 at 198. 017 on the tree. Paulo is 048, 378 at 198. Unbelievable. Incredible. Keith Haney wins it on a hole shot. That 017 light, we talked about it last round. Keith Haney is locked in on the Christmas tree. He has so much confidence in the race car. He is killing the Christmas tree. Paulo Juice is 048 in the tree. Runs one of his quickest runs in his history, 378-7198. And he has to watch Keith Haney pass about a car length ahead of him. That is incredible. Is hold your ears. <laughs> PTC Radio versus...
versus the world for an around coming at you presented by Diamond Pistons. It's the radial tire 10 fives to the front. No, I said it wrong. Radial tires to the front right there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> radial tire cars, of course, to the front. Here we go. These guys are about ready to fire it up. Listen, what am I, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? This guy's doing the thing over here. If Duche was here, he could do it. Who do you got? Do you got Stevie Jackson? Do you got Keith Haney? Everybody online. That's right. We got 13,000 plus. Join it back in at 12.13 in the morning. Mark Savage drops some or sprays some fuel into the top of the ejector. Stevie Fast hits the button and the blown Hemi is lit and ready to roll. The Shadow 2.0 trying to do a job that the original car couldn't here at South Georgia Motorsports Park. And will this finally be the moment for the Enigma to shine the Larry Jeffers build machine that was created not to be a pro mod and a radial car. It was built to do this and this only. The two of the most talked about guys coming into this race, Keith Haney, who I never thought would make the final round, is actually there. He has proven that he deserves to be there, and he's got Stevie Fast Jackson that said, no way that Haney could take him out. None of these rounds have been won on either side of the racetrack by a fluke. Like you just mentioned, Lee, each guy earned his way to this spot. They didn't get there by spinning the tires and pedaling 90 times. They've made solid, uh, they've made solid hits down the racetrack. It does not get much better than this. The fact that it's played out this way with these two guys, you couldn't have scripted it any better. If you're on the property, get on your feet. That's right. I don't care how tired you are. You need to get on your feet. It's $50,000 up for grabs at Radio versus the World. Right here, lights out, nine, no escape. The only major question remains, if Keith Haney turns on a wind light, what will Duck name his new pet moose as he moves to Canada? <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> Me and Marty Moose are going to be doing a lot of hanging out. Jackson wings the motor a little bit there to keep it cleaned out as his crew guys bring him in. Big Phil Schuler standing behind the race car with the radio in his ears. I don't know how you can see him, but we have five crew members per car, and then we got Phil Schuler. So that's six and five. That's 11. 11 people watching excitedly from the starting line. Brandon Square doing a two to 11 <laughs> on the left hand side of the racetrack. Here we go. Who do you got? Flying around. Radio versus the world. Jackson's in. Haney's in. Lights out nine. Wow, Stevie Jackson 374 at 199. Haney was 377 at 199. Jackson gets him on the tree, gets him 60 foot, gets him 330, and gets him eighth mile, baby. Jackson, that is called a gap band right there. Cancel the order for the mail order moose. Duck is staying in the USA. <laughs> um, the mail order brew, the mail order moose has got to go. What a final round there is Keith Haney, the best run he has ever made in that car, 377 0 at 199 and a half miles an hour. But Steve Jackson was the one who rose highest to the occasion on the starting line, 027, 957 short time. I don't know what the quickest short time in the history of radial drag racing is, but 957 is very, very stout. Awesome right here, but here we go. Battle of the Arms Machines. Got to go move on. Outlaw 632 is Ken Cortuccio.